how I, how is everybody today? I am so excited to show you a vintage recipe. By the way, this is for curries for every kitchen. And this recipe is passed down to me from my grandmother to her from her mother and grandmother. So it's uh, it's like a very vintage chicken curry. And it is done with the chicken with the bones inside because that bones gives you the juiciness and then um, the flavor of the bones comes into the chicken curry. And this one is like it's like a slow and sturdy chicken. You cannot rush the flavor. That's what my grandma told me. Anyway, by the by, we are getting introduced ourselves. I already started the onions. Um, actually, I used shallots. I know it's a small and it's hard to chop. I used a four this size shallots and chopped into thin thin pieces. And they are browning over there. To that, adding a paste I made with ginger and garlic. So this side ginger piece peeled off and little chopped up a little bit, and garlic peeled off, and then made it into a paste with a little water in your blender. So I'm going to add that paste to it. Now you have to wait until this paste paste gets. That way, brownness goes away from this paste and it becomes a little bit of brown. And by the way, I took a whole chicken for this. And uh, any major supermarkets now, uh, if you ask them, you take a whole chicken and any major supermarkets, if you ask them to cut them into curry, uh, curry for chicken, they'll cut it into small pieces like that. You need these small pieces with the bone sound to make this curry very juicy and very um, tender and very tasty. So, let me get that. But what I did was like I took up most of the fat out, so that means I took most of the skins out and I kept some skin that attached to the wings and like thighs like that because that doesn't have a whole lot of fat. But you need that skin to make it easy to get the flavor. Now I'm going to put the whole chicken in there. Coat it all the time. This recipe you develop spices batch by batch and slowly infuse those spices into this chicken. So you don't need even a drop of water in this chicken. So only thing it is very time for you. I'm on and three teaspoons of salt. And a pinch of turmeric to develop the color. Now, once I do that, I mix it well. And I'm going to lower the stove to medium to medium low, cover it, and I simmer it slowly until the, all the flavors develop before we add a next batch of spice. Okay, we are back and it's time to add next blend of spices. This is my grandmother's own recipe. All it is is like you have two parts of cayenne pepper, one part of coriander powder and another part of cumin powder. And this is pretty hot. If you don't like it, this is where you adjust it. You can put the cayenne pepper less or coriander powder more. Depends upon what is your spice tolerance. But this is her um, blend of spices and the ratio of spices. So I'm going to add this flavor. Now you see we didn't even add a drop of water to the chicken. But you have all this water coming out. That's how the slow simmer make it. By the way, I asked my grandmama. Why don't I put a glass of water and turn the stove off and cook it very fast? She showed me her finger and said, slow and steady. 
that's the only way to develop this flavor. So I kept quiet and and I listen to her. I do exactly what I do. See, you can't you can mess with the old and vintage stuff, right? So and my grandma thinks I ask too many questions anyway. So I try not to ask her too many questions. Okay, now this is the time. It takes longer to simmer because all the spices need to go into them. It takes when you cover it, keep it still in the low and you cover it and you sim simmer it for at least 20 to 25 minutes. While you're simmering it, you're going to make next flavor. To that, we got, we're toasting some spices here. I got a six cloves and a few pieces of cinnamon stick and one tablespoon of coriander seed and a little bit of dry coconut. We're just toasting to bring all the spices together. And then I have one cardamom. This is a green cardamom and the seeds and skin all. I'm just going to spice, toast them. And once I toast them, I'm going to use my modern pastel and I'm going to grind them into flour. If you don't have this, no problem. You can use your um, any kind of blender you have, spicy grinder you have. Uh, when you use blender, I suggest you put two or three drops of water so the blender can get going. Okay, we came to the last blend of spices we're going to add. And look at that. We didn't even put a drop of water. All that chicken is came out so juicy. That's all taste right there. Now, you add these spices. By the way, for each time you add spices and simmer it, come here and stir it occasionally. You don't have to be in front of the stove all the time. Just come back and stir it occasionally so every piece of chicken is coated with all that goodness. Okay, now this is the last blend of spices. Now, now we cover it and simmer it for 5 minutes. And we are ready to eat after 5 minutes. Okay, our chicken curry is done. Our vintage chicken curry is done. There you have it. You have a bowl of rice, bowl of yogurt and bowl of chicken curry. What else you want? And I also want to tell you this is the best way to stretch you back in these hard economic times. This chicken, one chicken will feed you anywhere between a family of six to eight. And don't worry if you have a small family, keep the leftover in the refrigerator. It's always enhances the flavor as it stays. One day you eat with rice, next day you come back from work and you get two pieces of pita and some yogurt, some cucumber slices and the chicken curry, you have another dinner ready.